figured you went down to the lake. Welcome you to Christmas Eve service. Merry Christmas. What a joy to be gathered, especially after last year, with all of the ways that our worship was uh, changed and interrupted from our usual traditions. It's a joy to be gathered in our space together to celebrate Christmas. Uh, I have a couple of reminders. I want to make sure that you had the opportunity to get a candle on your way in or that you're getting one now. Um, and a reminder to parents that we leave it up to you to decide when you're ready to let the little ones hold their own candle or when you want to just let them help you hold yours. Uh, I also want to remind you that when we are passing the light, the safest way to do that is to make sure that we keep the uh, lit candle straight up and down and we tip the unlit one so we don't burn wax on anybody that we love or that we don't love either way. <laughs> And I also want to remind you about um, our special Christmas collections. Uh, both Ives and Edgerton have a tradition of taking up a special collection on Christmas Eve. Uh, for Ives Chapel, our community emergency fund is where, where those collections will go. That's a, a fund that members of our community are able to come to when they are in need of um, really often crisis assistance. And um, we're able, able to help with that. Uh, Edgerton is doing the elementary emergency fund. And so likewise is a, is a fund that is used for emergency purposes, I presume through the elementary school? Uh -huh. Yes, the basket for Edgerton is the back pew there on the left. Yes, back next to the nativity, there's a little wicker basket that Edgerton can put their collections in. We have our, our offering plates here for Ives folks. Uh, and then I also just want to remind you that we as United Methodists practice open communion. So when we get to that part of the service, uh, you don't need to be a member of our church or any church. There's no specific age. Uh, all are welcome at Christ's table. So with all of that said, let's join our voices together and stand as we're able to sing our gathering song, What Child Is This? Number 219. <laughs>
with us virtually. We're so glad that you're able to do that. And B, I forgot to introduce myself. 
I'm Reverend Amanda Baker. I'm the pastor here at Ives Chapel United Methodist Church and across town at First United Methodist Church. And it's my joy uh, to be co-leading this worship with Rock Reverend Ross Baker, who happens to be my husband, and is the pastor at Edgerton United Methodist Church and Eudora United Methodist Church. Ross, would you come lead us in prayer? Oh, yeah, Liz Burke. Oh, yes, and, and Liz is, is joining us, and she plays for both Edgerton and Eudora. So thank you so much for being with us tonight. Will you please join with me in our unison opening prayer? The Christ child is born. All you who would find him, prepare for a journey as determined as the Magi. All you who would praise him, come with the faith to follow the star. All you who would worship him, come with humility to the child who shows forth the immeasurable riches of God. Let us worship Christ the Lord. Amen. We're going to, of course, uh, focus in on the Christmas story this evening. And uh, one of my favorite uh, variations on the Christmas story, of course, is out of Luke's Gospel. And so we'll be reading portions of that this evening. Uh, but we begin this section uh, with singing together, O Come, All Ye Faithful, on page 234. <laughs> showed them to his stable, where a manger of fresh straw would be the baby's cradle. An angel, yeah! The angel appeared to the shepherds in the hills and told them that they would find their savior in a stable that night. And then three wise kings followed a star. We're going to turn that. See what that does. Whoa, look how bright that star gets. <coughs> They followed the star to find their new king, and they rejoiced when it stopped over the stable in Bethlehem. And so the shepherds and the kings came into the stable, and there with Mary and Joseph was the child Jesus. Now we're going to read this whole story again from the Bible tonight, but I want you, maybe you can picture some of these scenes while we're reading, okay? Um, Grown-ups, will you help me? I like to do, at a children's time, I like to do a repeat-after-me prayer, but I don't want to put her on the spot to repeat after me all by herself. So will you join your voices with hers? Let's pray. Dear God, Dear God, thank you, thank you, thank you for the gift of Jesus. For the gift of Jesus. Help us always. Help us always to remember. To remember 
that Jesus came. That Jesus came to show us how much. To show us how much you love us. You love us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming and being on the point and you go back to your room. together a little town in Bethlehem. chapter. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when, and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to their own towns to be registered, and Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. <laughs>
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Christmas Eve, and it was unique because we, of course, don't typically get together with extended family on Christmas Eve, and yet we um, pre-recorded Christmas Eve worship last year, which was very different. And yet, as we read the Christmas story and lit candles and sang Silent Night over Zoom last Christmas Eve, about 8 or 8.30 in the evening, it was incredible. Incredible to consider that there were thousands of believers gathering in similar ways in various parts around our country and world, and yet all still celebrating in the arrival of the Christ child into the world. The birth of Christ that we celebrate in particular on this Christmas Eve is, is not one that focuses on a God who comes barging in through the front door saying, look at me, here I am. In fact, it could be said that that the Lord still today does not come barging into our lives in the same way, at least not on a regular basis. Instead, we celebrate. We celebrate in a Lord who stands at the door and knocks and waits for us to welcome him in. So the question for us tonight is how have we welcomed in the Christ child into our lives? I invite you to consider once more the traditional nativity scene, maybe one that, that you've seen across TV or film screens, maybe one you've read in stories or those beautiful nativities that maybe fill your home. That one with Joseph and Mary there in that little town of Bethlehem, a stable and a manger and the animals and the shepherds and the angels. And then I invite you to consider what it meant for our Lord, our Savior, to come over 2,000 years ago into a place that seems so small and insignificant. Into a family that, at least to the outsider, didn't seem of any importance. And yet to take, take heart the good news of this text. A text that, that assures us that our Lord Christ, the Lord, is still willing to come into our lives as well. The good news, because if the Lord is willing to come into the world in, in this way, in a way that maybe many of us would consider quite insignificant, then, then you and I, all of us, 
All of us have hope. Because that same Lord is willing to come into our lives as well. That even despite our faults, our brokenness, our, 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 our imperfections, our mistakes, the Lord is still willing to come into my heart and my life. Brothers and sisters, the, the story of Christmas has never been fully depicted on a stage because there isn't a stage big enough for the job even in Branson. The truth is that, that this story, the story of God, the story of God who, who comes in from the back, from backstage, unnoticed, but, uh, but, but a God who bit by bit seeks to move in a little closer and a little closer and a little closer over time. To move back into the spotlight of our lives. So the question I believe for each of us tonight is are you and I, are all of us ready to celebrate in a Lord who still loves us and accepts us and is still willing to come into our hearts despite our failures, even in the midst of the clutter that our lives sometimes hold? And so... I wonder how, how will each of us allow God to take the center stage in our lives? Amen. We move into this time celebrating in Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang, Glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, may we praise your name and join in your unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and there found no room. So Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable Jesus was born, so by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh, born of woman, on that night long ago, so on a night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, again gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again.
Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Your Son, son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Christ, the bread of the world, is born to us this night. The cup for which we give thanks is a sharing in the cup of salvation. We're going to set up two places where you can take communion this evening. Um, you can receive the bread and, and one of these. We're actually going to be using the individual cups of juice just as a COVID precaution. Okay. Ross, will you take this? Feast of the Lord is prepared. Come and uh...
well, despite the fact that the new and, and still training pastor forgot to tell you about the baskets for putting your cups in, <laughs> we did well. Let's pray. Glorious God, who presents us with the most precious of gifts, we praise you for all your blessings in our lives. Tonight we have come to this place in the midst of a busy time. We might not even have everything ready at home, yet we have come because we ourselves need to be ready. Work in our hearts this night, preparing us for your presence. Work in our lives that we may reach out to others in comfort and compassion. Work in our world that the darkness that has encompassed it may be dispelled by the brightness of your love and your gift. In faith and expectation, we join our voices and pray as Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As you're able, I want to invite you to encircle the sanctuary. Uh, this is a tradition that Ives has for uh, Silent Night, that we stand in a circle um, to share the light with one another.
And now may we go forth from here, forever changed by what we celebrate today. May we carry the love and joy around this child with us wherever we go. May we continue to help bring God's love, joy, and peace into the world. Go forth in the everlasting love of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.